Hello, viewer. Once again, I am back with another Animating with Constraints uh, setup for you. Um, anybody who's tried to animate a prop before has probably come across a shot where they've had to either pick something up and or put something down in the scene. Basically, the character is going to interact with an object that starts not constrained to them or they're going to let go of an object that's no longer going to be constrained to them. And most people who have never uh, really dealt with constraints before will just set up the constraint on the prop and then turn the constraint off. I'm sure you've noticed if you tried that, that the object will most likely snap back to wherever you set up the constraint. And a lot of people don't understand why. It's because when you set up the first constraint, you're constraining it, it at that point. So what you actually have to do in order to let something go, or if you want to pick something up, there's actually two constraints that you need to set up. You have to set up one constraint to, in this case, the hand that's going to be touching the prop, and you need a second constraint that's basically to the world. So even though it automatically goes back to the world space, in order to keep it wherever the character places it, you need to basically constrain it to the world at that point. And this whole tutorial is going to show you um, how I do that. So here we have a scene. I've just got a guy. I've got a ball. I did my normal setup already for the for the ball. It's just a little sphere parented to a locator right here. And then I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to create my zero group to it. So I'm going to call this my ball zero group. All right, so this is ready to be constrained. And I'm just going to constrain it to this hand because what I'm going to do is I just want to rotate the hand and I'm going to drop the ball and then I'm going to have him let go of the ball and then um, I'm going to have the ball fall from his hand. All right? It's nice and simple but the setup for it is a little bit more complicated than you would initially think. So first thing that we're going to do I've just set up uh, the ball zero group, we need to constrain it to the hand. So I'm going to select the hand controller here. Then I'm going to select the zero group and constrain it. So now if I move the hand, hey, ball's in the hand. All right. And I'm actually going to set this up uh, as like a really quick, really basic animation, just moving things, just so that you can see that the ball will be in his hand for the first 12 frames and then after that he's gonna let it go so I know the spacing and the timing and everything's gonna be horrible but that's not the purpose of this bear with me alright so here we go I'm gonna set up I got my first keyframe right here set that I am also keying the locator of the ball because I'm going to animate the ball separately. And I'm setting up, There's this rig has a rotation for the hand control and then a translation for the hand control on two separate controllers. So that's why I'm keying them both, just so that you're aware. All right, so now I'm going to go to frame 12 and I'm going to set up the next key where he's going to be. This is going to be the last frame where the hand is touching the ball. So here's this, he's letting it go, right here. This is going to be this pose where he's letting the ball go. So I'm going to move the ball down a little bit. So this is the last keyframe on 12 here where the constraint to the hand is going to be turned on. And I say turned on because you're going to have two constraints and you're going to animate a switch between the constraints in order to, to get the ball um, out of his hand and constrained to the world space. So to do that, on frame 12, because I know frame 13, it's going to be out of his hand, we're going to set up the world locator, which is going to be our world space uh, master for the constraint. So all I do is you're basically just going to create a null locator. I always uh, scale it up just so that I can select it easier. And then I always rename it, so I'm just going to call it world loc. And I do this, and when 
in every scene, every world locator that I make is called this. And the world locator, put it somewhere where it's easily accessible in your scene, but it doesn't clutter. Since I'm not animating him, I can just leave it at the origin. And if you do move it, I always suggest freeze transformations on it. Um, you'll have to rescale it up if you scaled it before you hit freeze transformations, but always try and uh, zero out the translates and rotates just so that you avoid anything. Um, Alright, so now what you're going to do is you have to, right now on this keyframe, we're going to set up two constraints on the ball. So we're going to select the world locator, and then you're going to set up your second constraint on the zero group for the ball. All right. And I'm going to constrain that. All right. So now if you look over here, if you didn't know already, whenever you put a constraint onto uh, an object or group or however you're setting up your scene, anything that has a constraint, the constraint switches are right here. And just like any channel box control, one is on, zero is off. So right now, both of these are on. I'm going to key them both on right here on frame 12. Okay? I go right here, and if, I, if you open the zero group, you can see the constraints. And if you click on the constraint, on your timeline, you're going to see a uh, little tick for the keyframe. All right? That is, this is how you're going to um, know where your switches are taking place and where these keys are actually going. Is you have to click on that constraint itself and then it will display the keyframes on the timeline. Alright. Um, the next thing you want to do is I go to frame 13 and I haven't moved the character so nothing is moving. I'm going to key them again. So you're going to set up two back-to-back -back keyframes in order to do your constraint switches. So basically what's going to happen is on frame 12, we're going to have the first constraint, which is the one to the hand, right here, the right hand control. That's going to be on, and the world location, or the world locator constraint is going to be off. So that is saying, this right here, this setup, 1 and 0, on 12, the ball is still in control by the hand. So if I move the hand, the ball is still in control. Undo that. Now, on frame 13, I'm going to go back to that constraint, and I'm going to key the right hand off, and I'm going to keep the world space on. Now, if I move the hand on frame 13, the ball is free. This is how you let go of an object. So on 13, we're just going to move this down a little bit for animation purposes. Start this like he's moving it back. Put some overlap, why not? Um, and then just to show you that it's working, on frame 24, I'm going to move his frame back closer, or his hand back closer to his default position. And I'm going to move the ball all the way down here to the ground. And there you can see because I've got it in spline. So from 1 to 12, the ball is completely constrained to the hand. Then, on frame 13, it splits, and the ball is now constrained to the world space. Alright, so once again, in order to um, let go of an object, what you're going to want to do is you have to set up a second constraint system to basically, it's a null group that's never going to move. I call it the world locator for world space because essentially you're telling uh, the object to go back to world space, be controlled by the world, and not the hand anymore. Um, so all you do is it's the same exact setup that you did to, to constrain it to the hand. You're just constraining it to this world locator. And it works because you'll never animate the world locator. So obviously, on frame 15 here, if I move this to show you that the ball is constrained to this, it moves whatever the whatever uh, direction you move the world locator. So that's why you never animate the world location uh, or the world locator. Now, uh, one important thing that I would like to note really quickly 
is if you want to change the timing of something that's constrained constrained to two different things like this and you're switching between them you really it's if you don't grab the constraints like these these two keyframes right here if you don't grab these keys um when you shift everything your timing and your constraint switching is going to be all sorts of off I can't tell you how many times I've tried to move a couple things where a character has let something go and I forgot to grab the constraint and then all of a sudden when the character's hand is pulling away the object is still constrained in their hand and then it gets stuck in the middle of space or in the middle of the air so just remember if you want to retime something like this so let's say I just want to move it later to like around frame 15, 16 So I grab everything, and then I grab the constraint, and then I'm going to move them to frame 15, 16. There we go. So just remember, you have to select everything, including these constraints. So, um, what I do is, at the very beginning, whenever I set up a new constraint, I make a new button on my shelf. Uh, that has all of the characters controls all of the locators and all of the constraints selected so that whenever I need to retime something I make sure I just hit that shelf button and then I can start shifting everything around uh, I thought I'd go ahead and uh, add on to this video um, let's just say you didn't want to put the ball to the world space let's say you want to constrain the ball to something else like let's say this character is going to put the ball He's going to take it from his right hand and he's going to put it into his left hand. You can use the exact same setup uh, with the it, as you did with the world locator. Instead, it would just be to the hand instead of world. And you still use the back-to-back -back keyframe switching to key the constraints on and off. So, in order to demonstrate that really quickly, I'm going to reconstrain the ball here on frame 1. I can grab that controller again. So I'm going to select that controller. Grab the ball group right here. Constrain that. And test it, make sure. All right. So now we're going to do frame 12 like we did before. Oops. We're going to move the hand over. And then we're going to move this hand over as well. something like that. It's not going to be perfect. Okay, so here we've got our positions for frame 12 here. So I'm going to set a key on this as well. Set a key on that. And these guys have keys on them. Make sure that everything's got a key here. All right. So now, we're going to do the same thing that we did before, and on 13, nothing else has moved. So what we're going to do is we're going to select the other hand control, select that ball group, and then constrain it. Alright. Now, we need to key the constraints on and off. So I'm going to go to that constraint, and on 12, I'm going to set a key on both of these while they're both on 1, 13, set a key on both of them while they're on, go back to 12, turn the left hand off because it's still in the right hand, and then on 13 we want the ball to be in that left hand so I'm going to turn off the right, alright, and now I'm going to go to frame 24, and let's just do this, put that back at 0, And we'll put this one back at zero, just like that. So now, I'm going to scrub through here. It's not pretty because I think I just messed up the arm a little bit, but there you have it. It goes from one hand to the other.
just like that. So if you ever want to have what an object is constrained to switch, go to animate it up to whatever frame number you're going to have the constraint switch or you're going to have the new master take over. Set up the second constraint on that new master. Go into the parent constraint in the outliner and key it back to back while both constraints are on. Then go to the first frame, so in this case my frame 12, and then I turned off the second constraint, which is it hasn't taken over yet. And then on the next frame I'm going to turn off the first constraint, and then you can keep on animating. So I think that's all the animating with constraints tutorials I have for now. If I come up with any more, I'll obviously make them and share them with you. Um, as always, post any questions you have as comments or message me, whatever you need to. I'd be more than happy to help with anything you've got. Thank you guys for watching, and I really do hope that this helps you with your animations if you haven't been shown how to use constraints with animating props before. Have a good one, and have fun animating, guys.